thousands of times we see that God is the Father, the God and Father of Jesus Christ. So why do so many people think that Jesus is our great God? Well, it's because of Trinitarian bias. Let's take a look at one of these verses that is translated through this bias. Titus 2.13 Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to the King James. Let's take a look at the NIV, which is even worse. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So according to the NIV, Jesus Christ is our great God, not the Father. So, let's take a look at the Greek. Then we read, Awaiting for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So we are waiting for the glory of our great God. How will that be? Well, let's read Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So we see that Jesus will come back in the glory of God the Father. And this is what we are waiting for. This is how God will return. We know that God is in Christ, and Christ will return in the glory of God the Father. Let's take a look at another verse that is always misinterpreted. 1 John 5, 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true. And we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So many Christians read this and they say, see, Jesus is the one who is true, the true God. But how should we read this? Let's read it again. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding of God, that we may know Him, God, that is true. And we are in Him, God, that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So the God of Jesus is the true God. Compare this with John 17, 3. This is eternal life, that they may know you, Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So again, we see, just like in 1 John 5, 20, this is the true God and eternal life. We see in John 73 the same thing. This is eternal life, that they may know that the Father is the only true God and that He sent Jesus Christ. Jesus Himself said, Believe in Me, believe also in God. So people say, well, Jesus must be God because He will judge. So how will Jesus judge? And how will God judge the world? Let's take a look at Acts 10.42. And he, Jesus, commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. So we see that Jesus, the man, Jesus, was ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. Acts 17, 31. Because he, God, had appointed the day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through that man whom he had ordained. Whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he, God, had raised Jesus from the dead. So we see very clearly here that God has ordained Jesus. Jesus will judge us, but it will ultimately be God who will judge the world through Jesus. So, why is it so important to believe that we are waiting for the glory of God and our Lord Jesus Christ? How do these things connect? 
Look at Matthew 121. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. The word Jesus, what we always use, and I use it for teaching purposes because the Bible, our English Bibles talk about Jesus, but originally it is a Hebrew word which means God saves. And it was a name given to Jesus. And we see in the Hebrew that if God will do something through a man, he will put that thing in the name and give that name to the man. We see this in all the prophets. And now we see that Jesus was named God saves. God will save the world through Jesus Christ. Read Matthew 2.16 In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men through Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So again we see that God will judge and save the world through Jesus Christ. This is how God the Father is the only Savior and He ordains men. He used Messiahs to save all the time. We see that God used Moses to save. So let's go back. We see in Acts 2.36 that God has made Jesus our Lord and our Christ. We see that in Acts 17.31 17, that God has appointed the day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through that man he had ordained. So just believing in God won't save you. You need someone to follow, to believe in. That's his son. And his son is alive. He was made a life-giving spirit. And you listen to him. You follow him. Because Jesus is the way to God. And Jesus is the mediator between God and man. So by believing Jesus is God, you take away your mediator. But he is your brother. And you have to follow him. You have to get up and follow him. Because he knows the way. 